What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a brand new Football Talk video and this video will be action packed, we will have Liverpool transfer news, also we will talk about the top 4 race, the title race in the Premier League and I will also preview the Champions League games, Leicester play Atletico Madrid today and Real Madrid play Bayern Munich, so let me know what do you think the title race will look like. Uh, by the end of the season who will finish in the top four who will win the title who will miss out on the top four let me know your predictions and also the biggest news uh, so far is that uh, you know uh, the marca spanish newspaper is reporting that liverpool have already launched a bid to sign athletic bilbao's inaki williams his buyout clause is 50 million euros that's roughly 42 million pounds and I will be honest, I got really excited when I heard about this because he's a really, really explosive winger. He could be a brilliant backup player to Sadio Mane. I think that Liverpool could get him for a lot cheaper and uh, the marker are reporting that Liverpool are one of the many top European clubs who want to sign uh, Inaki Williams. He has scored four goals and six assists in 32 La Liga matches, but that's, that's not a lot, but he... He mainly has, you know, great potential, not, uh, you know, he's not world class yet, but he could become a world class player and he is a really fast direct player, which I think Liverpool really need. When Sadio Mane is out of the team, Liverpool lack a little bit of pace, in my opinion, because we don't have that explosive, uh, you know, pace uh, up front or on the wings. Maybe Divo Corrigi has that, but... Other players, you know, are not as quick. Firmino and Coutinho certainly, uh, you know, can't really beat a defender for pace, but they can beat a defender with skill. But I think that we need uh, to sign a player like him. I would prefer, you know, Julian Brandt to Inaki Williams because Julian Brandt, I think, will, would cost less money and he could maybe make a more instant impact in the Premier League because the Bundesliga is a lot similar, a lot more similar to the Premier League. Uh, than uh, La Liga. His buyout clause, as I already mentioned, is 50 million pounds. And he recently told Marca that he is proud to be able to come to Athletic Bilbao every day to work there, to uh, play there. I'm happy to be uh, to be interested in big teams. Bucky Williams could go to Liverpool because Liverpool, if uh, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool are serious about getting him, then we could definitely get him. So I'm really, really looking forward to the summer transfer window. It looks like that we will sign either Kalido Kulibaro or Virgin van Dijk and Mamadou Sako could be, uh, you know, worth up to 30 million pounds and if we either sell to Napoli who are also interested or Roma who are also interested or Southampton we could basically get van Dijk for roughly 15 to 20 million because if Sako goes to Southampton and we get van Dijk we pay 20 million plus Sako and deal is done and dusted and uh, Considering the relationship that Liverpool have with Southampton, this could be a deal that could happen because, you know, we have um, almost, in almost every summer in the past few seasons, we have bought a player from Southampton, so I really hope that we can uh, make some really big reinforcements. I, and I'm hearing uh, stronger and stronger rumours that Liverpool will really spend big in the summer, and I think there is no other way. If Liverpool want to seriously challenge for the title we have to upgrade our defense as you can see Liverpool have the worst defensive record out of the top six we conceded the same amount of goals at Arsenal the race for the title just got a lot more interesting Chelsea lost two of their last four matches in the Premier League as you can see and now you know the pressure is really on because Chelsea at one point were 10 points ahead of Tottenham that's a huge lead now it's down to four points Tottenham have a much better goal difference and if if it goes down to just three or two points then you know the pressure will be immense on the Chelsea players because to throw away a 10 point lead in the title race and that happened before Manchester United have thrown away a 10 point lead many times to Arsenal and Manchester City and if it goes down to three or two points then you know, that's just one game. One slip up and, and Chelsea could be second. But tot for Tottenham to win the title, I think, would be an absolutely monumental achievement because they have nowhere near the budget of the likes of Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal. And I also, for Liverpool to finish in the top four would be a monumental achievement. But ironically, Chelsea played Tottenham in the FA Cup on the weekend. And Chelsea have the easier run-in. Chelsea have four home games. Tottenham only have... a 
two home games. As you can see, yeah, Tottenham play Arsenal at home and Man United at home. But Tottenham still have four away games, but it's not impossible that Tottenham will win all of those games because they're away from have picked up. They can beat Crystal Palace, they can beat West Ham, they can beat Leicester and all away from home. And to be honest, against Man United and Arsenal, Tottenham are actually favourites at home to win. So Tottenham are basically favourites in all of their games, but that doesn't mean that they can win all of them. You know, Tottenham have won seven games in a row in the Premier League for the first time in, in God knows how many years. But it, it, it's a long, long time. And Chelsea, you know, the next two games I think will make or break Chelsea. Southampton at home and Everton away, those are not easy games. Especially with Everton, you know, winning all of their home games in the Premier League this year. Apart from the game against Liverpool. Haha, <laughs> that was brilliant. Love that. Love that money. Last minute victory. I always get goosebumps just remembering that game. And if Chelsea can win the next two games, I think they are, they are nearly there. Because after that, you know, Middlesbrough, Watford, Sunderland at home, those three games should be three points. And West Brom away, if Chelsea are going for the title, you know, I can see them winning there. So yeah, the title is anybody's guess. I think the next two games in the Premier League, Crystal Palace away and Arsenal at home for Tottenham. If they can win both of them and Chelsea drop points, I think the pressure will be immense. I think that Liverpool... You know, had the two toughest games in the run-in, in terms of all our remaining games. Stoke City and West Brom away, we historically don't do well against those teams away from home. But we came through them with six absolutely massive points and we just need to keep the momentum going. I think we can beat Crystal Palace at home and we can beat but Watford away. Watford away is another really tricky, really tough game. And all our games are, you know, really tricky because even Crystal Palace at home, you know, last season I remember that we lost that game. That was Jurgen Klopp's first uh, home defeat at Anfield and, and I remember him swearing in the post match press conference. So, so he was really, really mad at that game. I really hope that Crystal Palace could be our bogey side. And, and Sam Allardyce, you know, are always doing well when he comes in and saves the team from relegation. And they are fighting for every point. So it's going to be fascinating to run in. Liverpool still in a very, very good position. And I actually think that they can finish in third because Man City have some really tough games. Man City have a game in hand on Liverpool. They are two points behind Liverpool. But uh, that game in hand is Manchester United at home and Man United are also going all guns blazing whoever loses this game Man City Man United I think that team won't finish in the top four because both teams have really really tough, tough games and actually Man City's running is actually maybe even easier than Liverpool's running because they are playing uh, Middlesbrough away, Crystal Palace, Leicester and West Brom at home and Man City at home usually very very strong but they dropped points sometimes here and there for example they, they couldn't beat Stoke at home but yeah usually Man City as you can see at home they are usually, usually very very strong they only dropped points against you know Middlesbrough of the small teams so it's going to be fascinating Manchester United's running is absolutely brutal man they have Burnley away, then Man City away, Swansea at home, that should be three points. But then they have Arsenal, Tottenham and Southampton away. So five of their seven remaining games are really tough away games. I mean, even Burnley away, Burnley at home is really, really strong. So even that's not a guaranteed three points for Man United. And they just dropped too many points. I think it's, it's just a step too far for Man United. It, it, it would take a monumental collapse on Liverpool and Man City's part for Man United to get into the top four because I just cannot see them beating, you know, Man City, Arsenal and Tottenham away from home. And Man United might have to win almost all of the remaining games to, to actually finish in the top four because they will only draw level on points with Liverpool with the worst goal difference if they win their next two games, which is Burnley and Man City away in the Premier League and I just cannot see that happening. I mean, Chelsea had a really tough, really off game. Man United tactically outclassed Chelsea. 
but I can't see, you know, Man United doing that to all the other top teams that they are playing. Arsenal, they won against Middlesbrough, a really tough game, but they didn't really impress me. They, they lost uh, four of their previous five games before that Middlesbrough game. And, you know, they have Tottenham away, then Man United at home, then Southampton away and Stoke away. And Everton at home, so Arsenal's running is also brutal. Now let's take a look at the Leicester City Atletico Madrid game because Leicester could do an absolute miracle. And these are Leicester's results since they got rid of Claudio Ranieri. Notice the difference? I mean, with Claudio Ranieri, they lost a bunch of games. And then he was sacked after the Sevilla game. And then look at this six wins in a row. And then, of course, they lost against Everton because they rested many players for the Atletico Madrid game. And, and the Crystal Palace game, they were leading 2-0, but they drew. But I can actually see Leicester uh, causing some problems for Atletico Madrid in this Champions League game. Because, because uh, you know, Atletico Madrid you know, will be a little bit cautious sitting back. They don't want to attack Leicester too much because then they will be counter-attacked and Leicester have some really fast players like Vardy and Mares who can counter-attack. Uh, Atletico Madrid just need one away goal so they will try to score but they will be I think mostly defending and, and handing Leicester the in in initiative and it will be down to Leicester to dictate the tempo of the game. It's going to be a really great atmosphere, could be the last Champions League game for Leicester City in a long long time. But it's, it's, it's already a miracle that they are here. Two years ago, Leicester City were in the relegation zone in the Premier League. Now, they are playing a quarter-final in the Champions League. So that shows you that how, what an amazing turnaround football can be. And Real Madrid will play Bayern Munich. And I think Real Madrid, unless a monumental collapse happens, they will advance because look at their record and the Real Madrid are not playing you know amazing football but at this stage of the season it's all about the result and I think they will win the Spanish league Barcelona are six points behind and the Air Clasico is coming up I think next weekend so if, if Real Madrid even get a draw there then I think the league title is almost done and Bayern Munich need to win by two goals at uh, you know the Bernabeu Stadium and I want to check when was the last time that Real Madrid lost by two goals at home in the Champions League? It was actually six years ago, in 2011. So that's how what a big task Bayern Munich have. If they win by this scoreline, like Schalke beat Real Madrid 4-3, if they win by this scoreline, then they could, they could also go through on away goals, but that's quite unlikely. So really looking forward to the Champions League games and also to the rest of the Premier League season. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching. See you later guys. Good night.